Hey guys, it's Christina. Happy Monday, and it's that much brighter because Jackson Rathbone is here. How are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having of me. Of course. We were just commenting on your long hair. I know. And I miss gone. it. It's gone. <laughs> I had to cut it all off. Oh, my lovely locks. But the good thing about hair grows. It grows, and I'll probably be growing it back out. I like to go back and forth. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we have a lot. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. You a have lot. several projects in the works, and it's crazy that it's been 10 years since Twilight, so we're going to talk all about that as well, which I'm sure is mind-blowing to you. It's, <laughs> it's, it is, to it's been crazy. 10 years ago, uh, the first Twilight movie came out, it's and here we are. insane. It's so That's crazy. crazy. Um, but I want to remind everybody to please send in your questions and your comments. But before we talk about Twilight, we have to talk about what you have going on right now. You have a movie coming out, Heart Baby, and it looks yes. fantastic. Tell yes. us all about it. I'm so excited. Uh, Heart Baby is the true story set in 1984 in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. It's about this prison boxer, George Martin, played by Banga Akinabe, who's uh, uh, from The Wire. You can see him now on The Deuce. Uh, mm -hmm. He's an incredible actor. Um, he, he stars as this, this boxer who was the best prison boxer in Tennessee that they would bring in pros to fight him, oh, but wow. he would knock them all out. Mm -hmm. So finally the governor of Tennessee comes down and says, George, we're going to release you with a pardon from a life sentence to go fight for the 1984 Olympics for oh, the wow. U.S. And George turned him down. And the reason why mm -hmm. is, is just going to blow your mind. It's absolutely incredible. True mm -hmm. story. I play his best friend, Doc, who was actually okay. a singer-songwriter himself. He oh, led nice. the prison band. Yeah. And uh, he was the, the real Doc was on set every day to, to oh, wow. you know, kind of... Um, you know, help us navigate the prison mm -hmm. world and really kind of tell us how things were. And sure. He was there to lend me advice and whenever I needed it, which I, I leaned on him heavily for yeah. to really get that that real sensibility. So is is that kind of how you got into the character with his help? I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. I was nervous going into this. The first time I've ever played a real a real guy, especially, mm -hmm. um, and he was there and I, I wanted to make sure that I, I did right by him yeah. you know, and I did right by the story because the story is something that's very near and dear to me. Mm -hmm. um, it was masterfully written and directed by Angela Shelton and uh, it's coming into theaters November 16th in mm -hmm. New York, November 23rd in Los Angeles and then uh, it's going to be rolling out from there. And that's great. Uh, yeah, if, you know, you just follow my uh, you know Instagram, Twitter at Jackson Rathbone mm -hmm. and then Facebook.com slash Jackson Rathbone and mm -hmm. I'll be putting out all the dates where sure. you can find it. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm, I'm really excited about this film. And I'm guessing that you sing and play in this movie as well? I do. Yes. I do, yeah, yeah, you'll see me. I'm actually uh, playing the, the real life Doc's uh, songs that he wrote. Um, I'm, I'm playing them and performing them in the movie. Yeah. Will, will your kids be able to watch this movie, or is this? I don't think my yeah. kids are old enough. <laughs> Not yet. Six and two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gonna wait in a, a few in years. In a few years. In a few years. How are they doing? They're doing great. They're yeah. doing great. You know, they're uh, they're just growing every day. They're mm -hmm. the most the, the best artistic endeavors I've ever undergone. Yeah. You know, they're, they're incredible. <laughs> they're adorable. They're so cute. We have some pictures of them right there. They're oh, just look the at that cutest. Beautiful family. <laughs> Crop out that weird guy. And then like the, the three of them are gorgeous. What are some big milestones they've hit recently? Well my son has just entered into first grade. Wow. Which is uh, that's a big deal, you know, sure. first grade. It's the first of the grades. That's yes. why they call it first grade. <laughs> right. Um, he, he's doing wonderfully. He's reading at a very advanced level. Mm -hmm. um, my and my daughter's the rough and tough Humble one. Is she? she wants to be outside playing with the bugs and uh -huh. the snails. And Trying to keep up with her brother? Oh, no, no, no. He's the one inside reading books really? and drawing comics. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. They're, bo they're both incredible. It's it's really thanks to, to my wife. So, yeah. you know, thanks, Sheila. <laughs> And you guys have been together, what, you've been married for five years? Yeah, we just celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Hey, it's thank very you. exciting. What's the secret to your marriage? Secret is, uh, I, I have to ask her, she's always right. So. <laughs> there you go, that's the secret. <laughs> she's always right. Um, how did you guys celebrate? You know, we, uh, we we celebrated our anniversary a little early because mm -hmm. I had to go off to Chicago to shoot a new film okay. that I'm shooting right now. Uh, but we went to an incredible uh, Austin sushi restaurant, mm -hmm. which maybe sounds like an oxymoron, <laughs> Austin and sushi. <laughs> but this incredible restaurant called Tomodashi, and it's in North Austin. Whew, we ate and mm -hmm. ate and then ate some more. Nice, as you and should. And then uh, on our actual um, anniversary, we just wanted to spend time with the kids. Yeah. So we, we celebrated just as a family. We all hung out. Uh, we got in and out Burger, because there's one in Austin. Is there? And it's my son <laughs> and my wife's favorite food. Uh -huh. So we grabbed that and just uh, relaxed at home. That's great. What's the most romantic thing you've done for her recently? 
the most romantic thing mm -hmm. I've done for, I went to grab in and out burger. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's very romantic. It was, you know, I had to fight the traffic. Yep. I had to fight the traffic. <laughs> no, you know, it's, uh, we like to, we like to constantly just, just make sure that we're, we're in tune with one another sure. and, and, make, and checking in with one another and al always honest. And I think the most romantic things I've ever done is uh, admit when I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. That's good. I've seen, lear we're learning so many new things. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you got to. Yeah. Um, are, do you guys plan on expanding your family at all? Mm. We're really getting in deep yes. here. <laughs> well, tell me about, mm. uh, you know, I think uh, it's one of those things, you know, if it happens, it happens. Sure. Uh, we love having uh, the two kids and mm -hmm. we'd love more, um, you know, but it's, uh, you know, with travel, with time, uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure one day there's going to be more popping out. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, you mentioned before that you are shooting a movie in Chicago. Tell us all about that. Yeah, right now we're mm -hmm. filming, uh, I'm filming a movie called Dreaming Grand Avenue, okay. written and directed by Hugh Schultz, um, produced by New City, and it's it's a, it's a really fun existential film about dreams and love, mm -hmm. and how in a world now where everything has been commodified, you know, except for dreams, uh, what we can learn from essentially the dream world. Yeah, oh, and that I, I cool. play this really depressed uh, young illustrator um, who is really having trouble finding a job and finding himself, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, through the help of a dream detective mm -hmm. and a few other uh, kind of rather eccentric characters, uh, he's able to not only just find out more about who he is and who he can be by examining and embracing the past, mm -hmm. but also uh, maybe what love lies before him That's in so the cool. future. I didn't know that they had dream detectives. Oh, you didn't know that? No. It's a whole thing. <laughs> I didn't know. That's so cool. I'd have to like go to that. <laughs> yeah, go to a dream detective. Yeah. What about your dreams? Well, um, was this a hard character for you to get into? You know, uh, I'm a really pretty happy-go-lucky yeah. guy, so playing someone depressed, uh, you know, I've, I've definitely been there in my life, though, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, uh, you know, uh, nowadays the, there's such a, st you know, I think we're finally losing the stigma where we yeah. can't talk about mental health mm -hmm. and how, uh, you know, depression affects people. Um, I've definitely been some of the lowest lows, mm -hmm. and, you know, I really try uh, nowadays to be, to be open and honest about it, and, you know, uh, so I'm, you know, kind of going back to the points in my life where I was, I was severely depressed, and, mm -hmm. and it's hard to talk about when you're in it. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, to, to really be open to, to expressing to people, your loved ones, your family, or even a stranger, mm -hmm. you know, to reach out, seek therapy is really important. Yeah. And that, that, this happens for my character. And so it's, uh, it's another little wonderful avenue that, you know, we can talk about within the, within the framework of, sure. of this narrative. Is it hard as an actor to get into that kind of state for the character and then kind of bounce out of it? It is, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes it can be, you know, I, I'm not a method actor, but but mm -hmm. I, I like to say method in the moment. Between action and cut, I, I'm, I'm the character and I, and I live there. Um, and then I, I like to utilize my, my real experiences. And sometimes, you know, at the end of the day, it is really hard to, to shake it off. Sure, yeah. Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's important. It's really important to leave the character on the set or mm -hmm. leave the character on the stage. And that was my, my training growing up as a character actor and, and in theater. And I think... Uh, I've been able to utilize that training in, yeah. in film. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. I'm excited. And you have uh, new music as well. You're so busy. Do, How are you I doing do. it all? <laughs> I, uh, I keep a tight schedule. Yeah, seriously. Between your kids, everything. You, well, you're I mean, I, I, got, I got a great wife. Yeah. <laughs> she really helps out. And uh, my kids are pretty awesome. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I have new music coming out. It's, uh, it's actually my first single from my mm -hmm. album, American Spirit Blues, is out now. It's nice. called Young and Tragic. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, depression and um, there's this kind of a, an epidemic right now with, uh, with people in their, their late 20s and early 30s that are drinking too much and actually mm -hmm. uh, overdosing on alcohol and, right. and dying from uh, liver failure and cirrhosis and people don't talk about it a lot and it's, 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 there's a stigma to it and I think this is a song that really addresses kind of the issues that I was uh, finding myself in when I was about 27. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, you know, living the rock and roll lifestyle a little bit too hard, and I, I wanted to get out of that. Yeah. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be one of those victims. I didn't want to be young and tragic. Sure. And so I started writing this song, um, kind of as a note to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, hey, be careful. This is something that. You know, you don't want to be this way. You 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 want you want to, you want to like you know hold your 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 head up and mm -hmm. your shoulders back and really embrace the world as opposed yeah. to you know running from it or hiding it within a bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, so this is a song that's really it's really 
really, you know, me. You know, yeah. it's like it's 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 me being my most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And this whole record is uh, me really opening up, and uh, it's the most honest music I feel like I've put out there. Um, and it's really an examination of self, and uh, especially as like you know, a young American, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you know, the, 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 in, in today's uh, society. Yeah. Have you seen *The Star Is Born*? Because it kind of has that similar, you know, um, storyline kind of. You know about something. Yeah, you know yeah. I'm a huge Lady Gaga fan. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> Honestly, right. I, I think she's incredible. And Bradley Cooper. I mean, come on. Like, sure. uh, I haven't seen the film yet. Yeah, yeah. So don't don't ruin it. No, I no won't. Spoilers. But it has similar. Like he's you know suffering. He's an alcoholic and suffering mm -hmm. from things like that. So you know it's kind of similar storylines. That you know yeah, it sparks exactly. a conversation. Yeah, and that, that's, that's what I think we need to do. We need to mm -hmm. you know nowadays within social media we have the construct. We have the ability to talk to one another. We have the ability to reach out mm -hmm. and to encourage people to. You know, it's like you know. There's, there should be no shame in it. There yeah. should be no shame in saying, I need help, mm -hmm. and uh, or I'm having an issue with this. Yeah. And uh, you know, luckily for me, at that time in my life, I, I met my wife, and mm -hmm. she was one of those people that just was like, "Hey, you know, this isn't a, a, a healthy lifestyle." Yeah. And it's like you wanna you wanna do something with your life, then mm -hmm. do something with your life. Right. Was there kind of like a breaking point for you where you kind of realized like, "Oh, I gotta maybe turn some things around." I wouldn't say there's necessarily a breaking point. That's mm -hmm. something that I definitely wanted to steer away sure, from. Sure. Yeah. But I could see that there was a you know a rock bottom. Like mm -hmm. if you continue that lifestyle where you're just you know you want to party all night mm -hmm. and and you just you kind of running away from like like nowadays I, I like in order to keep up with what what I have going on mm -hmm. I keep a tight schedule and I make sure that when I'm in the music studio recording for Young and Tragic and American Spirit Blues I'm only working between 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. yeah and I'm not trying to pull these long hours mm -hmm. and pull this like old like hey look at me I'm Led Zeppelin sure, I'm gonna be living in the studio yeah. partying all night mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make sure that I have time for what is important which yeah. is you know self-care mm -hmm. you know and my family yeah I think it's great is that gonna be like a, an overall theme of the album it is it's a yeah. the, the main theme of the record is you know kind of stories of, of truth and mm -hmm. redemption and forgiveness nice. um, there's a one of the songs uh, he heavy road is about a prisoner um, kind of examining his life as he nears his execution date oh, wow. another song is uh, one foot in the grave which is about um, how do you live life when, when you're you know like waiting on your death it's, mm -hmm. it's supposed to you know kind of focusing on how the end is going to be uh, it's about focusing on what's happening right now sure I think that's great thank you um, Lauren says you look like Milo Ventimiglia's younger brother do you ever get that I have gotten <laughs> yeah, that have before <laughs> that's a wonderful compliment thank you Milo's a handsome dude <laughs> he is so, a handsome hey, dude maybe he'll give me a part and this is us <laughs> maybe do you ever get mistaken for anybody else uh, you, uh, sometimes people like they look at me and they're like you know you kind of look like that Jasper guy. Yeah. Right. I'm like, you know, I get that sometimes. You're like, I get that sometimes. I mean, speaking of Twilight, um, I mean, like we said before, it's got to feel pretty incredible that it's been 10 years. I can't believe it's been 10 years. It makes me feel so old. <sighs> I can't believe. I know. I'm like, oh, well, there's a, there's like a, what, what do you call it? It's like, that shows my age. Right. But uh, you guys celebrated this weekend at Comic Con, which is so fantastic. Yes. What was it like getting some of the cast members back together? Well, it was great. We had uh, Kellen Lutz, mm -hmm. Eddie Gatheggi, and our, our director. Catherine Hardwick yep. all we got to do a panel with Josh Horowitz who yep. we know is amazing yes. mm -hmm. and uh, we had Kristen send in a video right. and we, we tried Skyping with Rob yeah, and we got him but it was a little <laughs> it was a little, it was a little technical difficulties uh, it was great getting the gang back together sure. and reliving the memories and, and really the best part was seeing the fans show up again and yeah. how their passion still still there to this day. Is that crazy to you that they're still just as passionate about it as they were from day one? Are you kidding me? I'm just as passionate about the Stones and I wasn't yeah. even born when they right. were releasing music or mm -hmm. the Beatles or you know like uh, they they have a passion for something and you know passion is just one of those things that you you can't teach mm -hmm. and these and so f to be a part of something that that they loved is just uh, I feel honored yeah what was the moment for you where you realized like oh my god this is like a real cultural phenomenon I think it was when my mom stopped asking me if I was going to go to college oh, really? <laughs> uh, no but seriously it was you know like when we pulled up to the first red carpet and seeing all the all the fans lined up mm -hmm. it was kind of mind-blowing and then for starting to film the next movie and there are fans at every set waiting really? and then at the next premiere they're camping out sure it was kind of this gradual build yeah um, I, I, I still am just kind of like 
taken aback by it, but it's it's incredible. Yeah. Like, uh, they're, I, I forget who said it, but I don't like to say that they're my that they're fans. I like to say they're our employers. Yeah, seriously, no, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, looking back, do you have a favorite scene to shoot? I know everybody always says the baseball scene was so much fun to shoot, but do you have a particular favorite? <laughs> the baseball scene. I don't know how fun it was to shoot. Right, it, was it was like freezing, it was right? raining. It was freezing. <laughs> um, I actually liked the Cullen's intro a okay. whole bunch. It was yeah, in yeah. the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. You know, Anna Kendrick's kind of narrating. It's like, oh well, that's that's so and so. That's Emmett. He's big and strong. That's that's Rosalie. She's gorgeous. That's Alice. She's yeah. Oh, like like uh, nymph like that's Jasper. He always looks like he's in pain. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I remember playing that, and, and people were like, "Wow, are you like what's that? What's that look you have?" And uh -huh. I always explain Jasper's demeanor as: imagine you're on a diet, and you're surrounded by a buffet. <laughs> And it's like this the vampire in a high school just surrounded <laughs> right. by just meat, you know? Yeah, but he can't do anything about it. He can't do anything it. about it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that. Um, Maria and Catherine are asking uh, another Twilight movie. Will there ever be another Twilight movie? Oh, will there be another yeah. Twilight movie? You know, I am not the one to ask, but uh, <laughs> I would say uh, it would be interesting to see some Twilight prequels. Yeah. You know, they're gonna go, go back into the universe of, of the Twilight, uh, like to go into the Twilight universe to explore uh, how Carlisle got the Cullens together in the first place. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see how Jasper and Alice met. Sure. That was something to me that, I mean, A, that's what I, drew me to the character in the first place is uh, Twilight Eclipse, uh, mm -hmm. the chapter Newborn, yeah. which is all about Jasper and mm -hmm. his origins. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I'm sure, like anything else, they're going to reboot it. But uh, I think there's a there's a whole universe there that they could really expand, and we got to finally start seeing a bit of in Breaking Dawn. Mm -hmm. And I know Stephanie has uh, has it all written out and mapped out in her oh, head. Oh, I'm so. sure. Yeah. yeah. So you definitely be a part of it. If they want. You know, if I was asked to, I, yeah. I would. Yeah. I would. That's great. Oh, have your ki I, I'm sure your kids are still a little too young to see this, but are you excited for them when the day comes for them to watch it? I I am. I'm excited. Yeah. You know, it's uh, my my son has only been able to see a few things that I've done. Okay. Um, he saw The Last Airbender, and he really dug it. Um, <laughs> and my wife is so sweet. She she has the she found the Jasper Barbie doll. Oh really? Um, so yeah, it's on the shelf in my daughter's room. That's great. And then my son has the little Sokka action figure mm -hmm. uh, from the Last Airbender. That I remember one night, uh, like we heard this kind of noise, and we're like, "What is that noise?" And like I, I peeked my head into his room, and he was playing with the, my action figure. That's so great. And it was really cute. That's adorable. It was adorable. <laughs> That's really cute. Uh, Samantha says the world needs a standalone Jasper movie. I oh, like that. All right. <laughs> all right. Is that Samantha? Yes. All right, Samantha, from your lips to Stephanie's ears. <laughs> yes. Um, looking back, what was your favorite behind the scenes moment? Mm. Behind the scenes moment. Um, all right. So one of my one of my closest friends, I think, from, from the series, uh, Nikki Reed, yep. is an incredible woman. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when we were getting on the plane. I, I didn't know she was even in the same airport um, from from Burbank to Portland where we filmed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was I always bring my guitar with me, and I was gonna go on this small plane, and the stewardess for some reason was kind of giving me a hard time about bringing my guitar on, which I'd flown with hundreds of times. Sure. And she was like, "Well, you know, you, you have to check it." And I was like, "No, I, I've never checked my guitar. Mm -hmm. It'll fit in the overhead, you know, bench." She was like, "No, I don't think it will." I was like, no, no, it no, will. It will. <laughs> and, she, and I was like, I've done it a, a bunch. She's like, no, sir, you're gonna have to check it. And I was like, uh, uh. And then behind me comes this voice, uh, ma'am, I know that he can get that guitar in there. Like, but, and she just, without knowing me, Nikki Reed just yeah. stepped up for me, stepped in, and and really, <laughs> I think she put the the stewardess down a little bit, but uh, in, in a really sweet way. Sure, and yeah. she got me to help me get my guitar on board. And uh, this is before she really knew me. She helped That's me out, right. and she was so sweet. And to be honest, I, I I had been a fan of hers. I saw yeah. Thirteen and what her and Catherine Hardwick wrote and uh, what Catherine directed. It was an incredible movie. Yeah. And so I was like, and this girl is standing up for me? Sure. That's so cool. And you guys became fabulous friends, right? She's a godmother to your son? Yes, yeah. she's the godmother for my son Monroe. Yeah, did she take her godmother duties very seriously? Oh, she's fantastic. Yeah, is Are she? you kidding me? <laughs> oh, and, and now she's a mother herself and is mm -hmm. fantastic at it. She's, yeah. she's one of the most uh, wonderful people. Yeah. Do you have any crazy fan experiences? Looking crazy back, crazy fan experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been <laughs> there's been some. Um, nothing too incendiary or, or, or wild. Like we're we're really blessed within yeah. the Twilight community to have. 
great fans. Nobody sent you anything strange in the mail or anything like that? They don't have my okay. mailing address. <laughs> yes. Don't get any ideas. Don't get any ideas. Who, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you think it, about, what it was about this movie that connected to people on so many different levels? Well, this is, you know, the first film came out 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is one of the... The, the first films that really had a not only a strong female protagonist mm -hmm. uh, written by by a woman and, and adapted to a screenplay by a woman, but also directed by a right. woman. Like this was before Wonder Woman came out. Catherine Hardwick like hold, held the record for highest grossing film directed mm -hmm. by a woman. And you know, it's uh, there, there's such strength and such such passion there. Um, it's hard for me to say exactly what it was, but I, I mean, you look at those, just the, the, those little attributes in and of itself, and mm -hmm. I think that just the world was ready 10 years ago sure. for finally what's starting to really come to come light now. now. Mm -hmm, totally. What was the audition process like? The audition, <laughs> this is funny, so uh, I was living, I think the audition was at around Hollywood and Vine okay. in Los Angeles, and I, I was only staying about a mile or two away, so uh, I, I, I walked there with my guitar, mm -hmm. I was kind of, I was just kind of strumming along, just, you know, I don't know, being a weird artist that I am, <laughs> and uh, I got to the, like, I got in there and put my guitar down, I was kind of in the waiting room rocking out, and I, I walked in the audition room and I met Catherine Hardwick and she just was awesome. Yeah. And she's from Texas. Mm -hmm. I'm from Texas. She's a little eccentric. I'm a little eccentric. <laughs> and we just vibed right away. That's awesome. Yeah. Is it true that you were up for the part for Edward as well, or did you read for the part? Yeah, I think okay. uh, every, every Everyone, single right? guy in Hollywood was <laughs> right. up. Yeah, yeah, Henry, Henry Cavill was up sure, for the part yeah. of, of Edward. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, Catherine and I got along so well after my audition for Edward yeah. that uh, uh, she actually had me fly to Pittsburgh with her to help audition. B before they wanted to cast Edward, they mm -hmm. had to find their Bella. Yeah. And they had their, she had her heart set on Kristen Stewart right. after watching Into the Wild. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she, I flew with Catherine to Pittsburgh and I helped read Kristen Stewart for oh, the wow. role. Oh, that's so cool. It, it was awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we went back and uh, Catherine called me up later. She said, hey, listen, we got Cedric Diggory from Harry Potter to, to play to play Edward, but I really want you to play Jasper. You know, he's a Texas guy. You're mm -hmm. a Texas guy. You know, read Twilight Eclipse, the newborn chapter, and sure. let me know what you think. That's so cool. And I, I did my research and I was like, you know what? Hopefully we can, you know, hopefully the first film does well enough, we can make the third one. Yeah. And it did. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, what was it like to see Rob and Kristen's relationship flourish on set? You know, it's, uh, I, I'm not much of a get in other people's business kind yeah. of guy. It's like, I think uh, their, their chemistry on camera is mm -hmm. incendiary and it's beautiful, it's it's, sure. it's, it lights up the, the the film as you can see. Yeah, yeah, they were and like the, the per perfectly cast. Yeah, it was yeah. wonderfully cast. I mm -hmm. think you know, like one of the best uh, things a director can do is find the right cast, yes. and that's Catherine Hardwick. Totally, and it seems like you guys are still so close after all these years, which I think is so important, and that's a true testament to such great casting too. They're awesome. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, I, I love my cast. Yeah, and I think I, I I've been blessed, and I've heard stories of a lot of people that don't get along with their right. castmates, and I, mine were all awesome. Yeah. So looking back, what is the one thing that really sticks out in your mind? The one thing that sticks out in my mind is just how awesome the fans have been. Yeah. They're incredible and wonderful people and it, a franchise can't be a franchise unless there's people to, to buy the tickets and mm -hmm. you know it's 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 hard-earned money and you know tickets are expensive sure. and you know they they really loved these characters and they loved yeah. these stories and and it's inspired people to become artists mm -hmm. I can't tell you the amount of uh, people that have come out and said you know what Catherine you inspired me to become a director yeah. because I saw you or look at E.L. James in uh, Fifty Shades of Grey inspired exactly. by mm -hmm. Twilight you know totally, Stephanie yeah. Meyer inspired women to, to write stories that they're mm -hmm. passionate about uh, I mean for art to beget art as an artist and an entertainer, that's that's the greatest compliment. Totally. Do you guys have a group text? A group text? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. The DM. Yes. Um, Sarah is asking, can we see your tattoo? Which one, Sarah? Um, I think the ketchup. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you want it? You gotta get it? All right, here we go. Uh, okay. Can you tell us the story Sorry, behind Mama. it? <laughs> um, this was in New Orleans. Here, here nice, we get the good light. Nice. Yeah, it's just life size. Ooh, <laughs> Ivana White. Look at that. 
Yes. And you will win a hairy bottle of ketchup. <laughs> um, I was in New Orleans and I lost a bet, and that's all I will say. Oh, geez. Did you have a choice on what you could uh, tattoo nope. on yourself? Nope. <laughs> that was it. Did, were you blindfolded? Did you have any idea, like, when it was happening? Oh, yeah. Ready? No, I oh, was there. Didn't... I was fully conscious. Okay, you were fully conscious. The best part was, like, uh, we, were, we were in the, uh, no, I was conscious and sober, okay. by the way. I just honor my bets. Uh, and I lost. So I, I, it was funny, though. As, as I was getting the tattoo done, I think it was Electric Ladyland in, in New Orleans, uh, like, like all these, like you know, like heavier tattooed d dudes were rolling by, and they they'd look into the room, and they they look in, they look kind of do a double take, like. <laughs> all right. All right. No. Uh -huh. That's amazing. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's what everybody always asks me, and you didn't. Like, do I have mustard on the other leg? Uh, no. No. <laughs> that's that's the next bet. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hope I won it. Yes. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Congratulations on everything that you have going on. You have um, Heart Baby, November 16th. November 16th in New York, November 23rd in Los Angeles, and then it'll be rolling across all platforms after nice. that. Nice. And then Twilight is back in theaters for a couple days as well. Yeah, right? we got uh, Twilight is back in theaters October 21st and 23rd. And then on the 23rd, you'll be able to access it on iTunes uh, in ultra 4K high definition. As long as there's a and, and there's a featurette. Nice. Catherine Hardwick and I went back right. to Portland mm -hmm. to go shoot, and we went and we walked back down memory lane. That's so fun. Even put us in the same hotel. Did they really? Same hotel that we filmed, <laughs> like, like that we were staying at while we filmed. And then I also have uh, my, my new single, Young and Tragic, out mm -hmm. right now. It's on iTunes and across uh, a lot of distribution platforms awesome. online. Lots going on. Congratulations. Lots going on. That's yeah. so great. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.